glass longer? A little hot tea. All right. Welcome back. Welcome back. <clears throat> I, I never know how to start these because it's like, do I do this like weird intro where I'm like, oh, this is me and this is who I'm speaking to. Do you just start talking? <laughs> like, what do people want to see? I don't know. In the fucking chorus, right as we start, the dog starts going ape shit. But that's the nature of it. Welcome back. Black Magic TV talks, whatever the hell this thing is called. I don't know. Uh, with me today is a uh, a neighborhood guy, um, a musician, a yes. entrepreneur, a uh, pr- show promoter. A man of many hats. He probably didn't even think about all these things about himself. (laughs) But mostly he's just my really tight homeboy for (laughs) since the day he moved here. Um, Big Dog Loogie is with us. Popping. Thanks for coming over, dog. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, I mean, I guess I don't even know where to start. Like, I still remember uh, walking. I, I was at the riot room. In the middle of the day, so that meant that I had either just done something very scandalous and was trying to hide out so I would make an excuse to go to the bar, (laughs) or I think I may have been power washing or something, because I used to, Tim used to give me a little side hustle money for... I used to be psyched. I'd come out there, and I'm like, fuck yeah. Yeah. Side hustle money for Tyler. Shit's clean. Cleaned it up, baby. But uh, I was probably power washing, and here come Timmy with this... Tattooed up white kid with glasses and a fucking, I'll never forget you were wearing a Michael Jordan Chicago Bulls jersey. <laughs> and Timmy's just no, like. No, it's a BJ Armstrong. Oh, okay. It's a BJ yeah. Armstrong jersey. I wish it was, but. Yeah. And Timmy just looked at me and goes, this is my brother-in-law. And he looked at brothers like, you guys would be good friends. And we were just like, okay. And then we've yeah. been hanging out ever since then. I've always kind of listened to him on that tip. He's like, you're going to like this fucking guy. Okay, cool. We'll put him on the roster. Yeah, Timmy's pretty good about uh, putting people together. Oh, yeah. Like, and before you, like, I had a weird path there before you showed up at the bar because I was already, like, I had worked at another bar, but uh, always doing, like, I had my toe in. Yeah. Toe into certain things, right? I was, like, living half in, like, three different worlds. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, I had my toe dipping in the water over here hustling, and I was like, you know what? I just need some guaranteed cash extra than the day job. Like, let's go work at the this nightclub. And so somebody got me a job at a – I'm not going to name the establishment because I don't like to give the guy any credit. He was <laughs> a, a federal narc and still is. Hell uh, yeah. But oh. I went there, and it's where all of the um, – hustlers and dope dealers and street people went to party and every major player in the city would come up to me and just by chance i know these people right it's not like i'm no one and i never claimed to be like i'm just a dude that was cool enough to be invited into different worlds at times in my life right and i always stayed cool to where i got to experience a lot of the world but all of these people would come in and they would like give me like a hundred dollars to be able to smoke blunts on the patio that <laughs> night. Like I was leaving this bar with like a thousand dollars in my pocket, yeah. right? You know. And then one day they cornered me in the office, the owner and the head bouncer, and they showed me video of like, how you know all these people? Yeah. I was like, oh, they're just my friends. And they're like, weird. It's weird that you're friends with them. And I was yeah, like, I know people oh. everywhere. Yeah, I was like, I don't know. He's they're like, you're pretty white to have all these black friends. I was like, wow, I'm just yeah, isn't that something? Something crazy, <laughs> right? <laughs> just people I know from growing up, man. Yeah, <laughs> like, I didn't even but, notice. <laughs> yeah, didn't even notice. I hell, we didn't. I never, never even came up in conversation between us. But from there, I went and I was working around the union. Well, I was around the union, which is when I kind of got linked up with your cousin Dan. Yeah. And I wasn't working there. I, ju- I got that job because I was fucking dealing drugs in the basement and just happened to have a liquor card. Norcross was like, I need a bell I need a yeah. order guy. And I was like, I fucking. Right it was like, right he's time, got a man. liquor card. And I was making, I was trip- quadrupling my paycheck selling Molly at that place <laughs> back in the day. And then from there, I ended up just down the road. One day, somebody's like, I don't even remember who. It had to be like Dan or somebody I don't linked remember. me up. Yeah. Because you were you hadn't shown up to town yet. But when I was first there, that place was like in ruins. Tuber was there, Candy was there. Yeah. And like 
nobody was like in charge. Like the head door guy was this big old bitch of a man. And yeah. then me and him got into like a couple fisticuffs. And then he, I kept. Well, see the one that quit because there were ghosts. I somebody, may... qu- somebody quit because they said there were too many ghosts. That guy quit because <laughs> he kept stepping to me. Oh. And like he stepped to me one night in front of everybody while we were cleaning. And I threw down some trash bags. I was just like, yo, dude, we can go downstairs right now, player. And he like cried to Timmy. And then like he was scared because I broke this dude's elbows the first day I worked there. First day I worked there was St. Patty's Day, dog. Yeah. So like crash first, course, crash course, dude. First day, St. Patty's Day on the patio. I'm with this dude. And this drunk guy's breaking bottles, frat boy. I throw him out. He keeps trying to run up them stairs. Eventually, I just, I just, I launch him down, hold onto his elbows, and I slammed his elbows right against that wall and broke his fucking elbows. Yeah. And he came back later and all fucking gimped up with the police. And I was like, hey, this dude kept fucking rushing me. And they're like, yeah, get the fuck out of here. And yeah. after that, like, that I'm was kind of quit. Just like talk, telling stories to people who are in their twenties about the riot room because I sound like I'm lying. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I like I see the look on their face. I'm like, this is, I, I, I just, and I mean, <laughs> this isn't playing. And that's like Jerry all the time would tell me, like, dude, I was telling these people uh, stories about when we all worked at the bar, and they didn't believe me. And then luckily, like somebody else came in. Yeah. Was like, oh, that's all true. Man. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I. It was I, the wildest. It was one of the wild. I've been, I've been in a lot of places. It was the most wild place. That's it was. It was the most diverse fucking shit going on. It was so different every single fucking day. Dude, to work at a music venue where you had a death metal show inside and a hip hop show outside on the patio, and then to like go, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, like what's gonna happen? And then realize that, like, oh no, like these people are all chill together. Well, that was like, what, that was like one of the reasons that it kind of worked is because, it, you know, it's like people would, people just went there just because they knew there was some sort of like culture going down. Yeah. It was like, I'm not really sure what's going. You wanna go, uh, Oh, there we go. You want to go uh, go pop in, and you're like, you know, there's some Viking metal shit outside, and some like. It was that place that like any night of the week you could go to, and there right. was going to be we had music, and then all the like the built-in programming they had was cool too. Like yeah. even when it wasn't cool, it was tight. Yeah, it's like even if it was like kind of sketchy, like every you know Sunday night or whatever it was, it was still sick. Yeah, yeah, and that's what that was it. There was at least there was. It was a definitely a community of people because there was the regulars. Like there was a, the homeboys that had that guillotine clothing. Yeah. I don't know how many times those dudes beat the shit out of people in the parking lot who yeah. were trying to just jump me at the back yeah. door. You know what I mean? Those guys ruled. Yeah. I mean, I watched them knock out like four dudes one night. I was like, Jiminy Christmas. What do we got yeah. going on? That was a good time, though. I know. I uh, Somebody should write it all down. I was saying that the other night. Yeah, we should definitely chronicalize it. Somebody who's got more fucking free time than we do. Yeah, I just keep talking about it on here on tape. So eventually people will probably just That's try true. to call my bullshit. But yeah, now the thing is, like, there's all this lore that I was like the baddest dude there. But really, I was just on drugs. <laughs> and like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, there's so many times where it's like you couldn't be scared. Like, I just knew how to operate. Right. Like you could if you're going to be a door guy, here's door guy. One on one. Number one. Don't ever try to fight anybody. Like you don't want to fight. Like, no. The, first off, take Taekwondo because you learn how to dodge a punch. See many a guy f- try and fail because they couldn't take a punch. And uh, well, you're, you're also not like at, you're at work. You're not like having fun and you're not mad. They're right. mad. You're not. Yeah. You're like, you're no, not. it's like it's cool, man. You just got you know, to get out of here, dude. When somebody's mad, they've got so much more like going on upstairs when you're just like, oh, man, fuck, how many friends does he have in here? Yeah. It's like, but yeah, people don't, you know, I don't know. and you can't be having chicken shits on the squad. If you're at a place like that, we had a lot of chicken. Oh, yeah, motherfuckers showing up in flip flops and shit to work the door. It's like, yes, yeah. you might as well just go home, dude. We'll yeah. just pull a, a bar back off the fucking bar. Yeah. And he can do it. Yeah. And then that's how you became a bar back. The only, I, I realized real quickly, I was never making it to bartender because <laughs> that's how it always starts. Right. And then it was like, it was very, very quickly into the process. I realized yeah. I was not retarded enough <laughs> To become a bar back. Yeah. Because a that bar back brutal. is just a failed door guy. Yeah. <laughs> you was, know what I mean? Yeah, bar backing was fucking horrendous in there. It was. Oh, yeah. Having some, the nastiest job. That the was, nastiest. The dude. nastiest fucking thing that ever happened to me there. I was thinking about this the other day. I told this story. <laughs> Remember that old plunger that we had that was like, because there was that concrete wall on the men's 
shitter where we could reach over and like plunge. It had a fucking broom handle, right. so we could like plunge the toilet right, right, from right, like right. six feet above it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without having to like the blow worst it up toilet all in the, America. Yeah. It didn't make sense that toilet. Yeah, uh, yeah. It'd been better just have a bucket on the floor and just yeah. like dealt with that. But uh, somebody had fucking crammed a bunch of shit down into the sink, and then of course everybody's pissing in it and filling it to the top. And I'm like a newer door guy. And they're like, you got to fucking, so I glove up and I'm like digging out as much of it as I can by hand and I can't get anything else out. And I fucking, we don't have another plunger because nobody plunges the sinks there. So yeah. I force it in there and I've just got just enough room to like get some movement and I, and I get it to like swallow and it just like, I'm leaning over it. I'm like, hell yeah, I got it. To go to. <laughs> and it's upside down and it's full of that piss and it just pops yeah. all over my face all over my glasses in my eyes. I just like felt my way behind the bar. got the 151, just like pour it all over myself. I'm like, this will fucking sanitize me, I think. I oh hope. my God, yeah. But I probably took fucking six months off my life that night. God only knows what fucking brain-eating amoebas are in the fucking rejects piss that used to hang out in there. Oh, dude, I think back to like when I did drugs and like all the times i did cocaine off of the back of the stage bathroom toilet it's that bathroom like, was the, the king one, it was yeah. the king one yeah. for sure and it was clutch because no one really knew it was, you and only the air knew. conditioner was right above it and it was yeah. freezing in there it was like, a freezing. like if yeah but dude there was like somebody asked me the other night what like the best show i had ever seen was i was on discord with a bunch of guys and i was like oh hands down best show ever was the sword yeah sold out Asses to elbows, and where am I? I'm here's the bass player. I'm right here on the stage. Yeah, and it was just like the sword playing the soundtrack for me to like just ruin people's nights. Yeah, like that's a good one. Jump on stage, out the door, head first. You yeah. know what I mean? Jump on stage, out the door, head. But that, what a way to see that band yeah. right before they went to like. Because right after that, they only played, like, the Granada and stuff, yeah. right? They turned into a theater band. A lot of bands did that that went yeah. through there. Oh, yeah, dude, we got to see... Dude, I mean, I I tell this story a lot, and no one believes me. Nobody believes me half the time when they talk about Riff Raff, and I'm like, oh, oh, oh dude, you guys don't even know. Yeah. And I tell them about how you and I smoked all those cone joints yeah. with Riff Raff, and... He just stood in the... Remember, you were talking to the manager and the other two people that were with him, and you knew how much I wanted to hang out with that guy. Right. And I sat there having a conversation with Riff Raff for 45 minutes <laughs> while he's talking to himself in the mirror. And, and he it, doesn't break character. And he, and he never even... Yeah. Would, he never acknowledged me. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. It was just like... He's talking about and being eventually a we were just like, vampire and shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, we got I went to... He played yeah, there like four or five times. And uh, when I used to do all the groundwork and get artists at the airport and yeah. take him to dinner and shit. He, I dropped him and his tour manager off at their hotel, and you know, then the phone call comes through. You got to go back and get him. I go pick him up. He's got twelve escorts. I'm driving that Cadillac SLS. Yeah, I'm like, I, guys, I can take like seven people maybe in the car. And like, and so I show back up with a carload of escorts, and they're like, "What the fuck?" I'm like, "This isn't even all of them. This, <laughs> this, is, like, oh, this, this is, is round first, one of the escorts. I, I'll be right back. Yeah, I got to go back and hopefully I get riffraff this time." <laughs> Yeah, that dude fucking rocks. He rules, dude. Yeah, he's he, cool as hell. Yeah, he's... Uh, that was a great night that we had there. Dude, all the people we got to, like... It was cool that, like... Some of the people we worked with weren't cool. Right? Yeah. Like, they were cool people. Yeah. But they weren't cool enough to, like, keep it cool. Right. And you and I never treated anyone like anything other than... No, how I treat a, you. A human being. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna pop this coat off. Yeah. But uh, it was always cool that Timmy in Dallas, when there were those situations where it was like, oh, yeah, like, yeah, no, you guys are coming. To, you're hanging. We're hanging tonight, boys. Like, like yeah. that walk of flock. Dude, craziest show was probably walk that of walk of flocka on the patio. That I, that I think that was my number one. Yeah. Just because, like, I, I didn't really understand, like how turned up that dude was live. Like, I, yeah. I, I mean, I did, but I, you know, it's hard to, I don't know if you don't like watch a lot of live footage of some of those rappers, you don't really get it until you're like standing right there. But he was like festival lit and yeah. just had that. I mean, there was like 400 people on that little ass patio just going fucking nuts. Yeah, dude. And it's, there's so many, like the people we got to like, dude, how about that time? The glass animals 
played at Zar Bar. Yeah. And I didn't know who they were. I brought them from one bar to the other. <laughs> And like we're in the car and we're in we're in we're in the crossroads. Right. This is like at my peak time of like, you know, I got the van. Yeah. I'm being I'm me. Yeah. So it's like Turned every, every time I go, there's just somebody. That's when all the artists live there. So I knew everybody. Every corner, it's like, hey, hey. I didn't know who those dudes were until I get back to the bar and Tuber's like, You don't know those guys? I'm like, No, he's like, Do they sell at the fucking sprint center? Yeah. And then I took the one dude, he's up at the street doing uh Smelling salts with the fucking crackheads at the gas station. Hell you know, yeah. I'm BP. getting cocaine that night. That like, BP was fucking legendary. Yeah, that BP still is probably it's fucking scary shit. I mean, that was a dude. Just the cool people we got to meet. Like, I got to bands. go pick up Elijah Wood for that Sick. when he DJed. Yeah, I went up there to pick him up, and their you know the like agent Roto t- Baggins. Oh, dude. straight up this and the the agent is like. Rude as fuck, obviously. The day before, right. he's like, listen, you need to be at the airport at 10 a.m. with a full tank of gas and your car turned off. I'm like, oh, okay, what time does he land? He's like, Dude, we'll call you. I was out there till like 2 o'clock before they're like, okay, he's landing at this gate. Go get him now. By that time, you know, I had just found out, the guy who's driving him, I just found out where he was, where and when he was going to be somewhere. And I get there, and he, there's a mob of people. They're jumping on my car and shit. Everywhere we went for like two days, it was like that. We took him down to fucking Mills Records. Yeah. We, I called him ahead. I'm like, hey, will you close down and we can bring him in the back and he can shop? And they're like, absolutely. Just from people walking by the windows, there's a mob out front. It was insane. I've like, I've never met like or dealt with like an A-list motherfucker like yeah. that. And it was kind of a trip and also kind of like, oh my God, dude. Like, I like going to the grocery store too much for that. Like, that's, that's fucking excessive. Yeah. No, that is crazy. But also at that time, that would have been kind of past his like... Yeah. He's like one of those yeah, cold but it was people. Lord of the Rings people mostly. Yeah. It wasn't really like But also like not a, back then, like now more so you see a famous person in town, right? right? Like they're they're coming around more. Back then, you didn't ever see no famous motherfucker, especially in Midtown. And and like, I mean, I don't know. I was I, I guess I didn't really understand how famous that dude was. Oh, like, he's huge, dude. Yeah. He was cool as fuck, dude. I remember he had like a layover or some shit. And the next day he calls me and he's like Hey, I'm like, hey, what's going on? What's what's up? I'm not supposed to be talking to him really at all. I'm like thinking something's wrong. He's like, nothing. What what like what are you doing? I was like, uh, I was like smoking weed and playing Grand Theft Auto. He's like, well, I could like go eat if you want to like. I'm like, <laughs> like can't get my shoes on fast. Yeah, enough. but yeah, it was that was kind of the coolest part about being around at that time was like getting to like be around all that, you know, and like and like you were saying motherfuckers don't know really how to talk to people and shit. So whenever people would get around us, they'd be like, Oh, finally some normal people that don't really actually give a fuck about how famous I am. It's just yeah. like, Hey, are you cool or not? Like if you're yeah. cool, we can fucking party. Yeah, me and you were always like, do you smoke weed? Yeah. Like that was the only prerequisite we yeah. had. Like, Hey, we're going to warn you. We're going to get high. Cause I used to ride with you sometimes to go get those oh, yeah. people. And it'd be like, Hey, we're getting high. Yeah. We can wait. Yeah. Or you can get but high with right now. Yeah, or we can get stoned in the car right now. I picked up drive. Stitches and he had me take him to go get some baking soda. Yeah, oh God, Stitches. I was like, holy fuck. That guy, yeah. Remember that whole era? Dude, like, I can't even... Somebody's like, how many concerts have you seen? Somebody asked me that. I was like, I literally have no idea. Well, some of the... I was telling somebody... Every day for years? Yeah. <laughs> like, what, yeah. what do I tell you? Twice a day sometimes, some, you know? And on some Saturdays, they'd have a... Have day parties inside and out. They'd have matinee Dude, show. I, re- I regular did hour. those and day then late parties. Nights, it's like, and if they did them inside and out, that's eight fucking shows in one day. That's yeah. four inside, four outside. Yeah. And it's like, if those got, if there's three people on, that's twenty four performers. Like, how many shows have you seen? I don't know, thousands. Like, yeah. Dude, we used to. I used to do those rock and roll parties. Remember? And we yeah. had Chris Cubis, that comedian. Yeah. He lives in Austin now, but Chris used to fucking host those for me and then rory got kid congo powers to play that time yeah, which yeah. is like the craziest thing and like dude we just had so much fun there yeah I, there was uh, some drama but i kind of uh everybody's like you know like <clears throat> man i'm so sorry like man i'm sure you're like i'm like i'm not hung up on it at all like it's over yeah it, it's ended. Over. it ended oh you, oh that was your whole identity oh damn that's crazy yeah. like <laughs> no i'm moving on buddy yeah your whole identity was hanging out and <laughs> it wasn't even timmy and dallas's identity no. you know what i mean like that's what's wild is like they even knew like right until the end and then let her go baby they had a good run for a music venue like that unbelievable it was like 13 or 15 years or some yeah. crazy shit yeah crazy. they uh 
a lot of, it's like the same with the rap shit too like like local rappers i know are just like you're just like not doing it anymore i'm like no oh oh you're just a rapper oh i get it yeah you can't imagine not doing it like yeah it's be it would be like somebody being coming to me and being like i can't believe you don't have a band right now it's like yeah i don't I don't know, man. I don't. Yeah, maybe later. Maybe, maybe at some point. But like right now, I don't have anything to say. I'm doing this. This is how I'm saying the things I want to say. I also don't know how many people, like how much time I'm supposed to dedicate to like not just being a lazy piece of shit. It's like, can I just like have some free time? (laughs) Yeah. I got enough on my plate. I got enough going on. Yeah. Yeah, dude. And you went from, you know, you worked there. You moved your way up. You studied under tubers and you learned how to run a bar from everyone. You learned a lot of the good things to do oh, yeah. and a lot of the bad things to do. Yeah. Then you, then you went from there to building up a bar for someone else yeah. and making it su- highly successful, a very successful. I mean Panthers place was I mean you were having what would be considered the A list of Kansas City going that place, yeah. you know what I and mean? And then we did that little Restaurant, the like little sister restaurant, restaurant thing. And that yeah, was, that was killing it. And uh, but yeah. And then all, what happened happened, and you had you got to you gotta keep it moving though. You, you got to keep like, it moving. You got to eventually. There's only two options when you get to that level, right? Either you're cool riding, right, or you take the next step, which is you moved up the ladder. You went from being a bartender and learning how to do talent management and learning how to book shows and learning all that from everyone else to managing and building a bar for another owner to now you own your own bar. Yeah. Like that's the progression. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's, uh, I mean, you gotta take away something from everything, you know, like if it's not, if you're not learning anything, then what are you doing? Right. But now also another successful establishment right like yeah better than expected i might say you yeah. know what i mean yeah I'm, I'm happy with the trajectory on shit a lot of it's due to other people too helping you know it's not, yeah. it's, I'm not the, it's not all about me but um yeah it's it's going great i hope it keeps i hope we keep the momentum keep it moving i've i've kind of i didn't anticipate all the live entertainment that we've been doing that wasn't really a part of the, like the initial game plan but i mean it's, i can't not you know I'm, well dude you just gotta roll with it right like, yeah there's nowhere for there's also kind of a little bit of like a a need for like smaller venues in town there's a huge need you know for so it. like I'm, I'm happy to fill that void for people and like a lot of the stuff that we do too is like pretty mundane we don't do like a too much like rowdy shit so it's like i don't have to I don't have to monitor it like anywhere near like how Riot Room needed to be monitored. No, it's where it's just kind of like, oh, you guys want to do a show? Yeah, come on up. You got those country guys that come in, which is yeah, great. Cool. Um, but, you know, it's just a different clientele. A few little jam bands that you got. Yeah, we we get a lot of like DJs doing a lot of old soul and yeah. shit. It's just kind of. And I feel like any night of the week, the crowd could be different in your bar. It's not yeah. like some predetermined type thing. Yeah. I you like can... that you don't have like. You've been trying different food things out, which is fucking cool. It's awesome the way you've had those people do those pop-up shops in the summertime. Yeah. That seems like that's, like, the best way to do that. Yeah, yeah. I don't you have to do just, anything. Yeah. Your hands are free from all that. We don't do anything. I don't, t- I don't touch the food. I don't take the orders. It's just like, hey, I'm selling the booze. I'll book the entertainment. They can play the music. I'll do the booze. You do the food, and we'll all go home. We'll all go home happy. Yeah, don't don't leave a mess. <laughs> yeah, just don't, don't leave a mess, baby. Yeah. No, it's been cool. And now, world... We can talk about this to the world now. Because Logan and I have been... Oh, I said your government name. I apologize. <laughs> you have to bleep that out. <laughs> Be, yeah, I will. I'll go back and I'll bleep it out. Logan and I have uh, decided to... He scored a um, professional arm wrestling table. Regulation. Regulation. And the day he posted it up, I went to the bar and immediately said... This I'm sponsoring this. We are holding tournaments and I am going to live stream these on the channel. So starting we have a tentative date of next month. We we're not gonna it's hold like ourselves of the month to or that. beginning of the month. Yeah, it's like March 9th, I think we said. Yeah. So we're trying to get it all worked out and figure out like the 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 waiver shit and you know, people are gonna pay pay in and then winner. It'll be like a winner takes all minus the small percentage of the house is going to take for housing the thing. 
but it'll be a fun little deal and we're going to try to build it into like a nice fun yeah not look all you fucking dorks out there right now listen to me when i say you're not going to take it too serious this is for fun so that means if we have to make this for a charity to make it not so serious then we'll do that, and there won't be money involved. It will be just for funsies, where you pay to compete, and we give the money to a good cause. But it's, uh, uh, you know, it, it's we have our concerns, which are valid, of like yeah. people are going to get hot, and it's like you shouldn't get hot. It's supposed to be a fun, cool yeah, thing. Get it, get, I mean, get passionate about it, but let, let's 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 yes. all fucking be good sports and have yeah. fun. We don't need to be. Uh, and then if you lose, and come back next time. Yeah, that's we'll do, why there's we'll always another one. Yeah, we'll do more of them. There's always going to be another one. I also don't think that we should just be letting any Tom, Dick, and Harry sign up initially. Like. You know, kind of regulate. Yeah, a bit. I think we're just, gonna have to regulate the first one to let yeah. people know. Just to like, like maybe like handpick like six or eight friends of ours that are turn like, them into champions. That'll be like good arm wrestlers, but to, yeah, Josh but, Coop, number one yeah, craft. Yeah. Josh Coop. Adam Wendell actually training. Yeah, right now in <laughs> training, <laughs> the Frizz Wiz himself is, <laughs> has told me he's in training. To be a part of the Arm Wrestling Association. Uh, John Mann told me he wants to get down. Oh, yeah, John Mann. We used to have epic... Um, I lived in the bottoms, and John lived in the bottoms. And we would have these, like, arm wrestling tournaments at John's house. And one time, like, I was always kind of fat, and, like, I never worked out. <laughs> I was just, like, you know, I just knew martial arts, kind yeah. of. Like, I, I knew enough martial arts and enough boxing to, like, not get hit in the face and, like rock people you know what right. i mean i was never like muscle bound guy but for whatever reason i was all zooted out one night and somehow i made it we had this bracket and it was like me and john and yeah. they were all obsessed you're like you gotta take your shirt off i'm like why do i gotta take my shirt off john's just gonna whip my ass <laughs> like, why is like, being so mean to me yeah why are you guys like, what the <laughs> fuck man why are you making the fat kid take his shirt off dude <laughs> it's a little fucked up yeah yeah and I'll, i've got that uh i, I really want to let the winner uh, put on that Ted DiBiase million dollar man replica yeah. belt I got, and I want to yeah. like frame a picture of them until yeah, the next yeah, one yeah. in the bar. Be like reigning champ. Yeah, but yeah, it's gonna be fun. What, what was it? We've got a name. Uh, the, I forgot it already. Uh, Hillsiders Championship Arm Wrestling. I no, think yeah, but it had them. like no. It's like I can't remember what somebody uh, Strawberry Hill Arm Wrestling Tournament. Shat. 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 Strawberry yeah. Hill yeah. Arm Wrestling Tournament. Yeah. Shat. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be good. Yeah, that is, that's going to be fun. I want to do, we were talking about doing those uh, kind of pieces on the on the con contenders, letting them kind of talk shit. Yeah. I I think that'd be fun. I think that's going to be cool if we can get a nice, like, kayfabe style wrestling pro shoot promos going. Um, Yeah. We got some work to do on that, but it'll be fun. Yeah, I got the, I, I mean, I got the camera mount ready. I, I'm looking for deals to yeah. run the cables we should get a uh, get like a jock jams dj for, on charlie's back porch up high oh yeah dude just some fucking ignorant ass jock jock shit yeah that would be cool <sighs> or just classical music <laughs> like give people theme songs it gets a little sketchy online when we start adding music they yeah. like to hate a lot they like to hate me they always pull my stream down Oh, no. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we should. I was showing oh, clips talking, talking of about a Hallmark people. movie from 1995 last week, and they kept copyright striking my channel, so they like pull it down until the fucking shit's gone, and then they put it back up. Was this but, YouTube? Yeah, YouTube hates me. Yeah, it's they, Google. They hate on me. That's Google. Yeah, I, we're 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 uh, we're in talks about going to Rumble possibly, but I don't know how that'll be perceived by most of the people. Yeah, I'm so out of the loop on any of that. Yeah, Rumble's basically, it has this like... Is that like the conserv, quote-unquote conservative they, one or whatever? It has that moniker now, but mostly it's, it's just, got a bunch it's of those people just on a it. place where like anyone... Anything goes. Who's like banned on the internet goes there. They, they're they like old school YouTube based. Gotcha. They've been around for like 13... They've been around for a long time, like seven years at least, I think, maybe longer. Yeah. But... I mean, I've been, I, I have a channel already where I post the old videos up at, and I've been thinking about putting old Scarborough show on there to really kick them liberals, <laughs> kick them liberals off on there, you know, yeah. get his commie ass on there, pissing off all the, yeah, all the boomer dads. Man, it's crazy how like, like, it's like, yo, I'm trying to build a, a network, right? Yeah. Like, and like, yeah, I don't care. Like, I don't. 
I don't care about politics or whatever. Yeah. Like, Aaron, say whatever you want. I'm not gonna. I'm like a guy I'm that believes like you should you. be able. To, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I if you if you want to say that, go ahead. I don't care. I don't have to agree with you or disagree with you. But it, man, some of the comments that people leave is just wild. Today, like on his on his content. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like on the uh, like we're gonna make a whole episode of like. The f- like of him roasting the people that leave dumb like comments. Like reading comments and responding? Yeah, 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 That's yeah. awesome. But today there was like, a, a, I put a reel up of the show. And the whole idea of a reel is to like, like be like, wait, what? And then yeah. that makes you want to click the, the video yeah, and yeah. go watch the 20 minute video, right? So I put this reel up and this lady is like, I don't know why you respond. Why, why, why would you put up a video that just doesn't say anything? Like, take this down. And it's like, well, I mean, you just got demands. It just worked. Like, not only did you watch it, a bunch of people liked it. Uh, thousands of people watched yeah, it. Yeah, you commented on it. And you commented on it. Yeah. Like, thank you. Yeah. It worked. And I, I've, I've learned some, like, dirty tricks that, like, delete the comments. Because then when they see that the comment that got deleted, they come back for round two. And then you That's delete. hilarious. Like, you, can just, you don't even have to respond to them. You can just delete it. So when people talk shit, I always, like, heart it and give it a thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, yeah. Aaron's videos though never got so many thumbs down. They have uh, like the same amount of thumbs down as thumbs up. But did I, tell my, you, did I tell you, Aaron got me a one star review on, on, no. our, <laughs> on one of our business like Yelp g- oh, Google yeah? review things. Yeah, I I retold one of his jokes. <laughs> and Some girl got mad. Which joke? Uh, it was the one about him being on. I, I was telling it from he walked through the room and I was like, guys, this guy is so fucking funny. He's got this one bit. And I tried to tell his joke for some reason because I was drunk. Yeah. Probably fucking butchered the joke, but it's it's like something about him making a joke about being on, on SSRIs and oh, yeah. like being internally horny or some shit. Yeah, yeah, not being able to like... Yeah, oh, say, oh, saying yeah. somebody should fuck her or something. So, someone should fuck that yeah, lady. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it didn't, didn't work out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was like, thanks a lot, Aaron. He's like, I didn't do anything. Yeah, I didn't do that. You're an idiot. Yeah. Also, at that point, it's like you could have just been like, Aaron... Come tell your bit <laughs> and like really put yeah, him I'm on sure the spot. I'm sure he'd love that. Yeah. yeah, he'd love that. They love it when you do that. Too. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, I'm stoked for the arm wrestling thing. I'm stoked for us to get the bar set up to just do live oh, stream yeah, yeah. stuff. I'm trying to get Sheezer to convince them comedians to let me live stream the comedy shows, but they're all, I don't want to burn my material. Oh, yes, the... Maybe hundreds yeah. of people that will see this. Will. That's another thing about the bars that we've done. The bars Hillsiders, by the way. I don't All right, Hillsiders. I don't know if you mentioned that. Strawberry Hill. Yeah. If you're in Kansas area, bar. if you're in old four hundred three club, the old four hundred three club. Fucking. Old. I like to think of it as the old uh, whatever that crazy broad uh, Anna had there when she had the, <laughs> the insurance scam. Her <laughs> failed arcade bar after the pinball mo- bar moved out. God, I'm so glad that whack job didn't win a government office this year. Yeah, I uh, yeah, I hear a lot about her. I've spoken to her three times, maybe, and it's always just been really mundane. So I'm like, yeah. right, p- people have a passionate opinion about her in, in either way. They're like, I love that girl, yeah. or uh, whatever. Anyway, um, ask your cousin about her. <laughs> He'll uh, tell you all about her. Yeah, shout out my cousin. Yeah, shout out Lucky Boys. Um, uh, I, at this moment, <laughs> take a shout out to. Pimp our co-conspirators, yeah. Fortunati's Pizza. <laughs> yes. Um, what was I going to say? I just thought maybe Fortunati might want to come be a part of the arm wrestling thing. Ooh, yeah. Justin, actually, we, we are working on something together. Like, I'm going to do a and d night. Nice. And we got it all set up. We're all going to dress up. and Dudes this and dames. Dude and some dudes and dames. And uh, I got, like, a my buddy's going to be, like, a bard, so he's going to play funny songs. Oh, he's, cool. like, working on songs. But Justin said he would, like, give me pizzas for the That's podcast cool. if I let him know ahead of time. Yeah. Yeah, I lost track of what I was talking about. But uh, That easy end uh, cheeseburger is working through my body and manipulating oh, yeah. my thoughts. The old easy end burger, the yeah. death burger, dude. <laughs> yeah. Never. I ate food there one time, and I said, never again. <laughs> But I, I'm a vegan now, so I don't even eat. Yeah, I don't know what they've got there. You would even tater tots, tater tots, French fries, French fries. Um, Pat, oh. I like Pat because he knows like uh, being a sober guy. Yeah, and being a vegan, like I like going there because Pat's like soda water yeah. or cold brew. Because yeah. Pat makes cold brew and keeps it on tap at the bar. Yeah, yeah. so that's cool. I remember what I was saying. The you were talking about comedians not letting you 
film their sets. That's, oh, yeah. that's another thing with doing all these events. We've been doing so many comedy deals, yeah. especially since a couple other bars that were doing a lot of comedy have shut down. So I've kind of just like let them do. Just kind of let them do their come do their thing. But because of that, I, like I've never been around so many comedians in my life. Oh yeah, and they're they're interesting. They're an interesting bunch. Oh, let's talk about it. It's like getting to know tattoo artists, and you're like, oh, you guys are like really in touch with your feelings and stuff. I thought you guys were all. <laughs> I don't know. They, they're they're artists. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's for um, a bunch of people, dude. I've done these with all kinds of people, right? I've done them with musicians. I've done them with blue collar guys. I've done them with old Republicans, young liberals, like women. Uh, yeah. You run the gamut. I've done it. The only people who are ever apprehensive about it afterwards. Are the stand-up comics? Or, or about about putting the content out? About putting it out? About the things they said? Uh, they are very concerned about what they've said, and I go, dude, uh, hey, I don't edit this. Yeah, it's kind so of like, a gamut too. It's like you're in the business of talking. I mean, yeah, for so it seems like the old mechanic doesn't talk for a living. <laughs> yeah, I'm an old I'm an old body guy, dude. Yeah. I'm an ex drug addict body guy, yeah. like, and I'm just here. I that's why I tell everyone, yo. I, you know, I old Coop had to get a. I had to put a bleep in a clown mouth on Coop's episode because he dropped the. Uh, he dropped. I can't say he, it. I don't want to say yeah, it because yeah. then I had to. He I said one. it later. He dropped one. Yeah. It wasn't the hard R. Yeah. It was a different word. Yeah. But he dropped one. That's throwing it. That's not dropping it. Yeah. yeah. He he threw one out there, and I was like, God damn it, Josh! Now I gotta bleep it. And then later on, I was like, Well, he just said the. Yeah. You know, he's like, well, now you got to bleep that part. I'm like, shit, this is going to be so much worse yeah. than normal, you know? Residual bleeps. Yeah, I just like putting this thing, like, I will go bleep your name out. Like, that'll be funny. Because then people <laughs> be like, <laughs> like for totally no reason. totally not necessary. Yeah, it's totally not necessary. <laughs> but, like, I like being able to just, like, it's unfiltered, man. Like, off the off the back, off the front, chop it up. Yeah. Chop the the intro, the, chop the B, you know the the pre and post roll yeah. out, and you don't have like blue chew telling you what to do yet, so you're good. Yeah, I you know? did never. When <laughs> I, that's not the goal at all. Like yeah. the goal is to never have anyone tell me what to yeah, do. Like, that's true. I because I I got some things cooking. Like I'm trying to I you know because my you know my main steez is car shit, and like I want to get other people involved to where like. You know, Aaron's doing his thing, and he talks about politics and all this other shit. And if that grows to where he has other people with him, and they want to have some discussions, I'm cool with that. That's cool. I like doing yeah. the production side of that. I'm I'm doing my car thing again this year, dude. I'm gonna yeah. go back to like, I got like a nice little documentary series. I want to I'm gonna start working on soon. Uh, where that drag race I go to, that's a vintage drag thing at the end of summer. Mm -hmm. um, there's a bunch of people all building cars specifically for that race this year. Nice. So I'm gonna like I want to. I was talking with Todd, and we're trying to set something up where I can like go around and like shoot it less vlog style and less podcast style and more like an actual documentary of me traveling to go oh, that's cool. see these cars and see these people you know what i mean you probably shoot both of those types of content too while you're there just for like sure just shoot yeah. all day i can i can I, I can do an all day thing and, and and do multiple things with it yeah but you know but also i really like doing that live stuff that i showed you and yeah. I, I i'm very stoked to do shit like the arm wrestling deal. Yeah. And then, like, w if we can do the comedy show, like, that would be great. You know what I mean? To just... Yeah. Because I, I keep telling everyone, it just... We're building a community, right? And we're going to, like, do it up. So next Wednesday, I'll be at the ship, and I stream... I do the, the production side of the stream for this show called Colt KC. And it's this comedian, Susanna Lee... Oh yeah, and yeah. like Aaron She's was awesome. doing it with her, and he's not anymore. But um, I'm working a deal out with her to like do, you know, we're working a deal out where she's going to like invest in oh, cool. the network somehow to like get me to keep doing it. But also, I'm gonna start streaming it on my channel instead of like on. It doesn't need its own channel, right? That's just like, the way. That's the way shit happens, dude. You just gotta fucking just start doing it without yeah. any money and without any fucking like. Oh yeah. You know, I mean, it, because. It's like whenever I started working on Hillsiders, like I didn't have any money. I was like, I'm just going to fucking game plan this whole unit right now. I'm going to spend fucking 60 extra hours a week on this until I'm done like planning it. Yeah. And then you get the plan done and you're like, oh, fuck, we're already like we got half the work done. <laughs> like, yeah. Now, now it's just time to execute. Oh, yeah, we got to go find some money. But 
you know, it's out there. Well, we know, you know, yeah, we know, guys. we know, guys. that's what I tell people all the time. People hit me up and they're like, why don't you get your own shop? I was like, oh, I could get a shop yeah. right now. Yeah. But. Oh, great idea. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. I, I didn't. Yeah. I never thought about that. It's <laughs> the people I'd have to deal with to get the money yeah. to do the shop. And I don't, I don't have, I don't. Yeah. That ain't like the bar business. Mm-hmm. Money, you money comes and goes quick in that business. <laughs> in the body shop, you really gotta tough yeah. it out for a while before you start making scratch. Straight like, up, you got some guy coming to you asking you to uh, make fake invoices to launder money for. <laughs> like, man, you start having employees that don't exist, then you get into problems. You know, like yeah, that's no bueno. Yeah, they're always trying to find that laundered money. Oh yeah, I saw something my accountant was telling me about with the IRS. I guess they passed some shit. Or it was the Treasury Department passed it like in 2021. It's like being implemented this year where they're just coming into every LLC and they're like, we want to see everything. Like, Oh, yeah. I I got a tax guy yeah. this year and it's my parents' old tax guy. He's actually really good. He's right here on Minnesota. Yeah. And uh, the most important person in a business. Dude. And I was, uh, I went to them cause I got my kid now and I, you know, yeah. I had the best year I've ever had in my entire, in my 40 years of living. Hell yeah. Last year was the first time I made money to where I looked back and was like, it was worth it. Dope. You know? And, uh, I, I wanted to maximize that and mm-hmm. I did my return part, you know, but I also told them about all of this and what I was doing. He's like, dude, until you start making money. Yeah. Get 1099 on everything because the LLC thing just got crazy. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay. it's pretty nuts. And he's like, we're even still trying to like figure it all out. Yeah. Like what he's like, they, you have to be 1000% open with the books. Right. And like, I've always been so under the table, like my entire life. Yeah. So I've like, I'm pretty ignorant to a lot of the shit I've been learning. Right. You know, I've learned more about that in the last year than I ever have, but it's wild, man. Fucking, I, it's it's disgusting how much fucking money leaves the bank account into it into taxes, and I'm just yeah. like, God damn, the potholes are so big, they're like killing eight year olds around this motherfucker. Yeah, and you know, I'm like, all my money's going to it oh, supposedly. Yeah. I like mean, they put two million dollars into the high school my kid goes to down the street, and that's the biggest joke I ever seen. For two million dollars, we got a couple of signs and uh, a bunch of super woke teachers. Yeah, well, hell yeah, they care more about. <laughs> the sexuality of children than teaching them anything. And it's like, what the hell's going on? Yeah. Man? Well, it's important, you know, mm-hmm. I, I, it, it could be important, right? We might find that it was important, but also, um, I think them knowing how to read and write proper English is probably important. Yeah. And I'm not talking about kids that don't speak English. I mean, these children text message each other in hieroglyphics. Yeah. And, they say words where it's like nothing. They don't say the long form of any word. If it's more than one syllable, they somehow concoct it down to a one syllable adaptation. And it's like, dude, you guys sound like mongoloids. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I don't know. I wish I, uh, learned that tax shit in high school. That would have fucking helped me a lot. Yeah. I wish I would have. That's the only thing they should be teaching them. Like, hey, guess what? So half of your fucking income is gonna go yeah. is gonna go to us, and yeah. uh, here's why and how. I wish that I would have known. I wish I had been better educated about money, how it works, and what to do with it. Yeah, because I was very ghetto. Wouldn't be the word. It's a it's a problem in the hood and in. Amongst in the, the woods. poor whites, yeah. right? In the hood and the woods. That's yeah. exactly right, right? That's the fucking best way I've ever heard that <laughs> part. Um, but it's like this mindset of like, we don't have shit. So when we get some money, you got to spend it all. Yeah, before anybody comes and takes before it. Before anybody comes and takes it. Um, and you don't and put I'm, the TV box trash out till Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> we, we get that check. We're buying a TV. We're buying this. We're buying that. And come two weeks, we ain't going to be able to pay the fucking rent. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, and luckily, like, I'm beyond that. But I'm still, I still live paycheck to paycheck. I think most people do. Um, yeah. But I wish I would have known a little bit more about money and, like, what how to maneuver it and, like, even back in the day doing all the illegal shit I did, like I, yeah. I would have had an LLC set up. Yeah. Like even in the last nine years, right? Like ha- all the paint jobs I've done, had I 
known what to do and how to do it and taken some steps, I'd probably be, I, you know, I would be, I, I, w- I would have probably had my own shop. You yeah. know what I mean? But I wouldn't have to work as hard as I do if I don't know yeah. what the fuck I was doing sooner. Right. But it's yeah. all right. No, I mean, we know now. Yeah, no, now. I'm also not fucking 60. So, yeah, we're good. Got plenty of time to sort it out. But I don't think, like, my, I don't think my parents really, like, I think they kind of figured it out on their feet, too, you know? And, uh, so, you know, that's one thing I've like with my kid, I really want to like focus on with her when she gets to an age where it's time to start like teaching her about how money works and how just finances in general and investing and like you know, utilizing resources and stashing shit and moving stuff back and forth. Yeah. I mean, there's like, I don't know. It's, I don't know. I feel like I constant continually make mistakes when I'm just learning all the lessons I need to learn so I don't make them again. I, I make a mistake or two at least once. Every hour, if not longer, <laughs> I'm far from perfect. I fuck up all the time. I'm trying to figure out how to full time dad it right now. But I mean, my kid, she's 14. She works one day a week at a coffee shop. So nice. She, Which know, one? Uh, the I mean, you may not want to say. Oh, okay. Uh, but she's got her food handling license, everything. Good. And she's down and there. She's how old? 14? Yeah. That's tight. She's learning how to. Uh, how to make real coffee. Yeah. Like she learned how to be a barista and I've been trying to tell her like, Hey, this is a, any time in your life. You can go do this job now and make mm-hmm. money. You can go make coffee somewhere. Like you'll learn how to like, you'll learn this. She's working a cash register. She's dealing with the people Damn. and she's making a little cash. Right. And so she pays her own cell phone bill. Now. Gotta be somewhere on time. Yeah. Gotta be somewhere on time. Like, She's learning all these lessons that down the road, though now it can be a struggle. I know down the road, this will help her. The biggest lesson my dad ever taught me was uh, uh, be early, be clean, be nice. He said, yeah. he said that's, a, that's the quickest way to fucking be successful is just in a, in a business. Right. Like if you get hired at like ground level somewhere, if you're early and you're nice and you smell like presentable, like that's, that's more than most people can do. You know? I, I, was, I didn't have a problem with... Being early and nice. It's usually the smell part they got. Me. Well, you also, when you were working with me, we were working in a place that smelled like a fucking open grave. Oh, God. That place smelled like a sewer. There was a that men's restroom used to just leak down into that soda room where all the soda boxes oh, were. Oh, yeah. And when it was cracking in there, like Saturday night, if you had to go change a soda box, you'd have to like put a whole trash bag over you and yeah. just walk through like a waterfall of piss. Yeah. I was like, but I mean, origin story shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Dude, yeah, and all that sound equipment down there, oh, <laughs> like yeah. it's just getting shit water yeah. on it. Meanwhile, some dudes like fucking about you know halfway down some chick's throat. Yeah, <laughs> like around the corner, you're like, this is fucking horrible. Yeah, you guys have families and shit somewhere, I'm sure. Yeah, you're down here acting like this. Oh yeah, dude, there's some wild things that happen in that basement. Yeah, Something unspeakable basement. things. Unspeakables. You know, I went down there last week. I know you got the sign. I got right? that sign, yeah, from Tin Roof. That's cool. Uh, yeah, it's wild. It's wild what a little elbow grease could have done to that basement. It's like all clean and nice and presentable. Oh, no uh, it's it's a trip. If if we ever are down there, I'll I'll see if they'll let us back down in there to show you. It's a trip. Yeah. It's like damn, I could like sleep down here. If I yeah. Because what is that place now? What is it now? Tin Roof is what it's called. It's like a chain. I'm pretty sure there's like five or six of them. No music? No, it's all music. It's okay. I think I think it's like I, I'm probably wrong about this, but I think it's like a Nashville based, like kind of country themed spot. But I think they do like karaoke and have DJs and all kinds of shit. But they took over the foundry too. So it's like the foundry and right room. They built they got a big fucking garage. Oh, so door. that's why that whole back thing yeah. so it's one place now. Yeah. Yeah, it's that a trip. Was my, the foundry was just my that's just my peaking spot. Yeah, that's they, where I they got all my girlfriends from. That, uh, yeah. <laughs> They blew out that uh, area we used to call Tard Bar. Yeah. And it's like, it's got these big neons and full, like, bunch of taps and shit. It's like a full on bar. It's a trip. Whoa. Yeah, we'll go Is in the there. Is the circle bar still there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They kept yeah. the history. They kept of the, the circle place. there, but they built, yeah. Sometimes you need to fucking DD me down there and we'll just fucking <laughs> Yeah, we need terrorize. to go sometime. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Yep. Yeah. yeah, usually we talk about. You know where people come from, but I mean, dude, like, that's his Springfield boy. Yeah, that's not that interesting. Springfield, moved from Springfield to Austin, Texas for a few years, back to Springfield for a short second, and up to Kansas City. I've been here, uh, I think it'd be 12 years in May or April, something like that. Yeah. 
So, but I was coming up here and meeting all you guys a little before that, probably a yeah, year or two yeah, before. Yeah. I just come up here and get all clapped out, smoking fucking wet blunts with MC8 and Spice One in the basement. Yeah. Like, Getting twisted. Twisted. But, yeah, fucking, I've been living in Wyandotte County now for 11 years. Yeah. Which is a trip, because I don't, I, don't, I like forget I live in Kansas all the time. It's just, yeah, it's, you could throw a rock to but Missouri. But you were smart. I think we, that was probably definitely me, Timmy, and Dallas being like, don't live in Missouri, no, straight dog. Up, yeah. Don't live in Missouri, dog. Yeah. It's I, no I, good. I, I prefer, I, I mean, I'm not like married to any of it, you know. I'm just like, yeah, I could. I hear everybody's arguments why they like one over the other, but I'm just going to stay put. <laughs> it's just chill over here. It's chill. It's way chiller, dude. Dialed back. And I feel like it's like... You know, Kansas City's dangerous everywhere, but I feel right. like I feel like in KCK it's a little bit more personal, I guess. Like it's not this random. It's not like I mean, I'm sure there it, there's obviously shit that goes on everywhere, but a lot of the shit that I hear about is like so and so knew so and so and went and did this. Or it's not, it's not like yeah, yeah. This guy was at the gas station. And he just ran up and fucking shot this guy out of nowhere. No, 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 no. Everything that happens over here is usually gang related, or it's like some sort of domestic thing. Like, there's no like, look, dude. Random acts of violence. I like you got you're gonna have a hard time convincing me that that's an extremely common thing. That it's extremely common? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think there's that many people in the world who just wake up today and go, you know what I'm going to go do? I'm going to go to the gas station. I'm going to sh- I'm gonna just punch the first guy I see. Yeah. That's a random act of violence. Right. Like, you know, people get mouthy, and then there's actions and consequences for that. But, like, random acts of violence, and that's just like a... I think that's like a... That would be like a serial killer, yeah. right? Like that's like serial killer shit to me. Like, it is funny to me when people are like, "Oh, you're going to? They're going to Mexico City next month, dude." I was telling him, I'm like, I heard it's like really. I'm like, you live in Kansas City, homie. Like, how do you know? This isn't exactly Delaware. Like, yeah, it's you know you can get in trouble anywhere. You just got to keep your head on a swivel around here and just like be smart, and not don't be running your mouth to the wrong person. Yeah, you know? somebody we know moved by me at my old place. And I tried to explain to him, like, yeah, dude, you live right next door to a, a cartel house. Yeah. I was like, and. Like, Which could be great or could be terrible. And I told him, I said, and there's been five murders all around our one yeah. specific block in the last week. Well, that, it, I'm not a part of that. I'm like, it, that, what do, you, do you not understand that you don't have to be? Yeah. Like, if, so, if I'm drive, doing a drive-by with a fully automatic machine gun, you think I just stop shooting the gun exactly when I get past the house? Right. Or do you think that there could be some, you know, it's like, dude, you got like, there's like things could happen, man. I feel like you can get to know your neighbors over here a little more though. Oh yeah, for sure. Like I, even over there, I knew him. I, yeah. Dude, here's, this is the, the number one keys to live in the city. Uh, give out food and supplies to all the homeless people that you see on a regular basis, at least once a month. Because they're going to keep an eye on your fucking car for and you. And treat them as a human being. Yeah. And they will never they will never do you dirty. Um, number two is wave and then go say hi to the, meet. Learn the guy next door's name and talk to him when you see him. Yeah. On both sides of you. Yeah. Dude, I know almost all the way down the road now. Yeah. I know, I must know 30 people, 40 people in my neighborhood. Right. I lost my keys the other day, walking the dog. And the next day, I went and knocked on a neighbor's door. I was like, do you, do you have to have my keys? And they're like, dude, we got them right here. We, we've, been, we've been trying to get on our ring to see who, who, yeah. whose keys they were. Cool. Thank, thank yeah. you. You just saved me $400. Now I will go take something over there to thank that well, guy. Well, also another thing, too, like especially over here specifically, it's like getting to know somebody's fucking abuela on the corner. Yeah. And like, you know, it's like if their grandma stays over here and your fucking homies, like you're golden. Like, yeah. you know, it's like you got to show love like to the fucking old oh, world. I, I, you know, and it's also like just acts of service that people. It go, it doesn't go unnoticed over here, I guess. Yeah, well, no, it doesn't. But it's like things that are lost to most of the younger people, man. It's like, hey, dude, uh. No, I don't want to talk to you about the Ukraine. Right. No, I don't want to talk about Israel and Palestine. Um, because I don't live there. <laughs> and what I'm focused on is like my 75-year-old neighbors um 
they can't get out of their house if it snows. So I'm going to shovel their drive. Right. Hey, their mower broke. I'm going to mow their grass. Yeah. Like, I mean, you could you could argue that your vote can make a change, that you're, if you want to donate to things, that can make a change. But the quickest way to like make an impact on the world is to just like involve yourself in the things that directly in front of you. Right. Like I agree. You know, clean cleaning up. You know, if you're cleaning up in front of your house, clean up in front of your on either side of your house too, your neighbors and shit. Like little shit like that. Yeah. Because and it also it kind of comes from for me from a selfish place because it makes me feel good. But, right. You know, the secondary kind of. That's why. That's one of the reasons you do it. It makes you feel good. It makes everyone else feel good. Yeah. Because like I was at the Merc today. I was at the co-op. And the guy that used to squat in the empty lot across from my old place, Shorty, was in the grocery store. It's like, Jesus, Shorty, how you been? And we're sitting there talking, and they're looking at most of the people, even the people that work there, look at him like he's a scumbag. I'm like, no, I have a vouch for him. I'm like, this guy's okay. Yeah. He's a good guy. (laughs) Yeah. Shorty, you need peanut butter, man? Let me buy you some peanut butter. I used to buy him. Dude, that's the the clutch move. A jar of peanut butter, a loaf of bread, and some plastic silverware. Dude, that's golden. You just kept somebody alive for a month yeah. when they're down bad. You know what I mean? Listen to us, dude. We didn't turn out so bad. Yeah, we didn't turn out so bad, dude. Yeah, people are like, uh, I have a, lo- a hard time with a lot of the younger people and their like jam it down your throat mentality and the <laughs> anger that some Sorry. people have displayed. You know what I mean? Yeah. The fucking, you, you will listen now. It's yeah. like, no, I won't listen yeah. now, dude. You'll listen. Listen mm-hmm. to me. You've never fed the homeless. You've never helped a neighbor. You don't even know your neighbor's names. You've lived yeah. at your house for four years. You don't know your neighbor's name? Yeah. Come on, dude. I don't even... This The guy next to me don't even speak English. Yeah. Oh, I got one of those. Uh, he, he lives He's a couple like of houses up. Low every Asian holiday, or something. Every, you know, Christmas, Thanksgiving, knock on the door. He's got a fucking full plate of food for me. Yeah. I'm like, I don't like I don't cook like you cook, man. I can't really reciprocate this. Yeah. I don't know what to uh, do. Dude, I shoveled the, the snow for the neighbors. They came down... Did they? These motherfuckers gave me a personalized card. Yeah, they brought brownies. I didn't. I couldn't eat the brownies. Junior yeah. ate the brownies, but like, it's like, oh shit, man. Yeah. This is what it's about. Straight I up. I see him. We there isn't a person around here that in the morning you see somebody. Good morning. Oh, that's I know. what I like about this neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, me too. There's this guy. I know everybody by their dog's name. Some of them, but there's this dog Waffles that Merlin likes. Yeah, and the. Merlin's owner, hell, me and that guy, we talk every damn day almost. <laughs> like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> yeah, good. How are you doing? Yeah, there's. It's also like you know the police over here can can be pretty fucking uh, shitty at times. You yeah, know? and not really like in my experience, I haven't, I haven't seen them do a whole lot of like terrible things. It's just a lack of like you know they just won't show up and shit. So. Oh, I've seen them do terrible things. Oh, I've been I know a they party do, yeah. to it. Um, David Notorious, uh, I actually, through the work I was doing at the Police Athletic League, like I, it's weird because I know the police chief, and that's a weird thing for me, mm-hmm. right? It's like a weird thing that, like, yeah, <laughs> for, like for where I came from, like, and one time his wife got all weird because she was like, I said something, I was like, oh, they were like, they were talking about the election, they're like, who are you gonna vote for? I was like, oh, I don't. I don't vote anymore. I can't vote. And they're like, what? I was like, I can vote in like local weird state things, but I can't vote um, for the president yet. They're yeah. Like, uh, why? I was like, because I've never filled out the paperwork because I don't care. Yeah. And they're like, oh, she's like, what do you mean? I was like, oh, I'm a convicted felon. Yeah. And she's like, what do you do? And I, what did you do? I was like, oh, aggravated robbery. And yeah. she's just like, looked at me <laughs> with disgust and didn't say another word to me. Well, I was what like, you got and then after we left, the 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 Artie's neighbor is how I got involved with that. Jay. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Jay's awesome, really cool. Right on. As far as police go, he might be the best community minded cop I've ever He's met part in my of the, entire life. The big family of all that, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know who you're talking about. Um, lived on the hill his whole life. Right. His family owns a bunch of cool stuff and like. Bunch of buildings and his. No, that's the Thomasay. That's who I'm thinking. That's of. the guy who owns the pal. That's okay. That's Matt Thomasay. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Jay is still a patrol sergeant in in our. Oh, okay. He's, oh, he's the got patrol the cop sergeant by Artie's house. Yes. Okay, I see. He literally lives right next. Right, door to right, him. right. Uh, but he asked me to get involved with that lowrider bike club, and uh, 
you know, through that, it's like just weird. You know what I mean? Like meeting like Carl. I don't even know his last name. Yeah. I know the police chief, the chief of police, his name is Carl. Everybody else calls him chief. I just go, hey, Carl, how's yeah. it going, dude? <laughs> He's like, hey. But a week after that happened, his wife came back to me and she goes, she pulled me aside. She's like, I have to, I need to apologize to you. She's like, I realized after I left that like, I, I didn't want, I don't want you to think that I was disgusted. I just couldn't believe knowing you now that you could have ever have done something like that. I was like, Oh no, it's okay. I get that reaction all the time. Oh, well, like, thank you. There are some people like Logan and I are pretty good at internet trolling. Um, <laughs> Which he's tamed down now that he's a business owner, which I understand. Yeah, more of a father. Yeah, yeah more of a father. Being a, da- being a dad kind of... Being a dad will chill you out a lot. Yeah, I still be trolling. Uh, but the people that whine and cry on that Strawberry Hill Neighborhood Association page... Uh, oh, I got them good, though. Yeah. That's my uh, Hell, Hell Horse Saloon. Did I ever show you that? Oh, yeah, you just made up a... Made up a fake bar that it was about to open. Yeah. It was like some fucking cowboy like biker bar. Yeah. I was like, night, uh, fucking massive nightclub, wings, uh, indoor burnouts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. <laughs> yeah, they were losing their shit. They're like, I looked up everything. There's no license applications. Is anywhere. Yeah. I uh, The other day, somebody had been going around the neighborhood putting notes in a dude in people's mailboxes like violent felon in the area and it was a guy's photo and he was like, his felony was for possession of meth. And I was like, I was like, hey, uh, it's like, you guys realize that I'm technically a violent felon, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, and I've been living here. You guys don't have a problem with yeah, me. That's not actually violence either. And that's not actually a violent felony. Also, whoever's doing this is totally unhinged. Yeah. Dude, I hate, they constantly lock free dog, like free roaming dogs. They will lock them at that dog park and I catch them doing it. So, like, I had to tell one guy, I was like, if I see you one What's more the time, logic with that? That's the, locking a, a dog. Come get it. In this dog park, I'm going to pound your head in. You're taking an animal that you say you care about, and you're locking it in a place in the middle of summer with no water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, get out of here, dude. (sighs) This is, again, this is the city. Things operate different, right? Like, things happen down here. That and they sometimes they are what they are, and they change over time. That's another thing about Wyandotte County. You might round the corner and just get attacked by stray dogs. Yeah. Or if you if you have that beastmaster presence about you, you're cool. And yeah, you just walk among them. You just walk among them, dude. <laughs> walk around on all fours. Yeah. Or you're Brian and just kill your neighbor's chickens all the time because they don't learn to. His neighbors must have the dumbest chickens, dude. How many? How many must die at the hands of that dog before they just like? Oh, you're talking about the chickens over by the bar? Yeah, yeah. How many must die at dude. the hands of Brian's dog before they learned? There was one over of those fence? chickens that looked like fucking Chernobyl chicken, and uh, yeah, it's like trying to like make a noise and nothing's coming out and some. Like suburban girls were like, "Oh my god! Like, what are we gonna do?" I was like, "Just leave it alone. Like, it's fine. It's just dog food walking around. Like, yeah. there's chickens over it's here, cool. guys. Yeah, that that dog's been radiated. They're breeding. Uh, they're genetically engineered fighting chickens. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah, cockfighting's a big thing in this town still. Yeah, it sure is. It really is. Like there is there uh there's a, a restaurant on Seventh Street. That dude got busted. It was uh it was like the first taqueria really. And like the dude got busted. He had this like he had this oil painting of this rooster on the wall and it was like his prized fighting chicken. That's pretty cool. And like they got busted because they were having cockfights at the top on top of the That's restaurant. What we, that should be the next Black Magic sponsored event yeah. at Hillside. Black Magic sponsored cockfights. Cockfighting. It's really just a bunch of uh people from the LGBTQ community. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Tying mini switchblades on their penises. <laughs> mini switchblades? Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Um, well, well, can I promo my bar? Yeah, promo cool. the shit Sit. out of the bar, dude. Yeah, come by. Uh, Hillsiders Neighborhood Bar, Kansas City, Kansas, 403 North 5th Street. Um, pull up. It's open six days a week, closed on Mondays, live entertainment all the time, food pop-ups, big outdoor patio, bonfire, 
We're about to open up a tattoo shop next door. You can go get tattooed. Come. We're at in Blake's yeah. old spot. Yeah. I don't know if I can announce that. I don't know. I, they haven't really announced it yet, I guess. So I probably shouldn't talk too much about it. But yeah, we'll it's, talk about it's that some people after. we know. I, yeah. You know, I'm not really like in bed with them on it or anything. It's just yeah. it's just kind of a cool thing going on. And I'm like, fuck yeah, let's get, get Shout tattooed out and drunk. To Blake. Yeah. Get tattooed and then get drunk. Not yeah. the other Shout way. Shout out to my land. We also, Logan and I also, thanks to Logan, he hooked me up with my landlord. <laughs> and I'm so glad for that. <laughs> I love my landlord. <laughs> I'm glad you love him. I actually love Joey. Joey rules. I love Joey too. Joey's the coolest. Yeah. Uh, they've also like I dude. I mean, there's been ups and downs. I get it. Like, you know, I just took a different mindset of like, you know, can I do whatever I want in the basement? Yes. Is there some shit that needs to be fixed? Yeah. But like, I've just been kind of having to fix it myself. Yeah. That's what it is. You know I mean. What I mean? That's part of it. That's part of it. And I kind of, I want to, I've invested, as you can tell, because you've seen the whole operation yeah. here, I've invested quite a bit, so I'd like to stay here at least another yeah. year. You know what you I mean? You don't want to have to fucking go reset it up. It's a lot of work. Yeah. And I don't, you don't think. If you don't need to. I'm pretty sure I'm probably the only person that's ever rented from Blake uh, in one of his houses that just pays him on time every month. Probably. Without complaining. Probably. So I think he'll be glad to keep me. Yep. Um, if not, we'll just, I mean, we'll have to. You know? Yeah. Catch you outside, I um, guess. <laughs> catch me outside. Catch you outside. Yeah, the only way to really keep up with the stuff I got going on at the bars through the Instagram. It's the only like social media that we use. It's, yep. uh, I'll link that it down at the in the description. Yep. I'll put the link to cool. the Instagram. Yeah, follow the Instagram, come do a show. We do a lot of free entertainment, a lot of comedy, a lot of uh yeah, food pop ups. And if we're not doing that, then I'm just down there running my fucking mouth, which is fucking pretty sick too. Tyler. Time to time I've known the bar stool jockey down there and I would like to really get the people going. Yeah. Uh, notoriously one of the places where people somehow, uh, it's just like going to, for me at Lucky Boys, like I, it always seems to be the one guy who wants to sit next to me and it's like, yeah, okay guy, but fucking leave me alone. I didn't yeah. come here to, I, do you see me sitting at the very end of the bar and you see how the bartenders like don't bitch that I'm kind of in the way. Yeah. Fuck off. Yeah, Leave me, me alone. alone. Yeah. I'm here to drink sody waters and talk to my friends. Yeah, I've I've just given up on trying to sit there with my computer and get any work done when we're open. It's oh, just, no, you ain't going to be able to do that. Yeah, but it's all right. I'm, I'm happy people are in there, so. Yeah, rules. You got Charlie upstairs. That's how I met Charlie was at the yeah, dog park. He's a fucking homie. Charlie's the homie. It's all good, man. We got a little fucking little corner over there. I call it Lost Old Cove. Lost Old Cove. <laughs> <laughs> I like it over there, man. It's cool. It's chill. But uh, yeah, come by. Check it out. Check it out, guys. And you can also find Lugie on Spotify. Oh, hell no. <laughs> Fuck no. no. You can go find his Spotify. I, uh, not that long ago, somebody randomly was playing one of your songs that I know. And I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. Listening to Lugie's old music. And they went, what? And I was like... Yeah, it's my buddy. And they're like, no. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, dude, he owns the fucking bar yeah. that we were just at. They're like, wait, what? <laughs> and it's just like all the time. I was like, do you not pay attention to like anything? Do you just yeah. like listen to things and you don't look at them? Like, you see that guy? It's the same guy. Yeah. It's the guy. You're like, I'm, I'm dialed back to one new song a year. That's my, that's my thing. I like that. That's one, okay. one song, maybe one show. Dude, but also, it's that thing, man, where you got the, you got the baby, you got, you got Temple, yeah. and, you know, you got the bar, and you're, what, uh, what are you, a year and a half into the bar? Two uh, years? Yeah, coming up. Well, yeah, about a year and a half open. Yeah, a year and a half open. So, <laughs> Temple starts going to school. Yeah. She gets a little older. And you might, and it might not be rap. You know what I mean? You were also, when yeah. I said, you're just a musician, dude. Yeah. Like, don't take that away. You're also do a lot of graphic design stuff. Yeah. So, like, we, we're just artists, dude. We're just not. I we're, just can't sit still. We're a different kind of artists. We're not the sensitive, like, It's also introverts. nice, like, having as many, like, people in our lives that we do that do cool shit because it's like super inspiring like oh, I'm, I'm just like yeah. all i do all day is walk around and get inspired by like people in my life it's like everywhere i have lunch inspires me and shit you know what i yeah. mean it's like it's kind of nice kansas everywhere city's kind of around. on like an upward trajectory with that right now or it's yeah. like fuck i have like 40 friends that are sick as fuck that are like doing tool, like cool shit well and it's hard with the music dude because when we were all 
when we had the scene rocking and Westport was really cooking, like that was just it, dude. Like, yeah. you know, you might have been into a, uh, uh, you, though you were a rapper, you were still going to see other local bands because you liked music. And yeah. same thing, you weren't the only rapper. Yeah. Like, how many of those like straight up hood ass dudes? Did you turn on to different kinds of music? Oh, tons. Right? And there, it probably changed the way they oh, yeah. thought about everything. 100%. You know? Yeah. And that's what rules, man. It's all about being inspired. That's how this happened. Be like, I've been dude, for you years. Are, <laughs> hey, what's up? Uh, three like terrifying crips that I know. You guys yeah. are going to love goat whore. You yeah, guys are coming and checking it out. You guys are going to love this, dude. Um, but yeah, man. But that's what this is, dude. This is like the culmination of like yeah. trying to present that shit out to the world, you know? Yeah, it's all documented too, so you can people yeah, can reference nice it back. If, like, it'd be nice if we could get some shit to where we could like stream shows from the bar at some point, mm-hmm. where it's like, hey, also, you can watch Marty Bush perform tonight on the channel if you yeah. can't be here. I also got that garage we can do whatever in too. Yeah, we got to do something with that garage, Grandpa's place, Papa Papa's tell all, Papa's tell all. All right, guys. Well, again, thank you for being here. Um, Go do all the things. I don't need to keep telling you. Like the thing. Subscribe. Bow down to the supreme overlords <laughs> um, of YouTube. And we will catch you uh, next time. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, hit the like and subscribe buttons. And check out one of these other videos. We'll see you next time.